Hi everybody, welcome to today's uh, video. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, voice over LP optimization, which is a very important topic uh, in, uh, as if we consider the current uh, deployment uh, of the network, because we are moving from legacy 2G3 networks to LP networks with the voice operation as well. And as we move towards uh, the 5G networks, LP will be the uh, network providing the voice services as well and we will have very few traffic for 2G and 3G and as you know in some of the countries like here in Australia we already had a 2G shutdown and we are expecting 3G shutdown in 2024 and from there onwards. So let's see what are the topics that we are going to discuss in world uh, voice over LP optimization. The first topic is uh, PDCCH and uh, SPS. You know, PDCCH is your physical downlink control channel and SPS is your semi-persistent scheduling. So in voice over LT, there's a, there's a problem with PDCCH capacity uh, because of uh, voice over LT having guaranteed bitrate services and having scheduled grants most of the times, this goes into overload. So we need to have some kind of an optimization to cover for that. Then we have voice over LT coverage and capacity and then we have voice over LT delay and then we have voice over LT mobility. In this video, you will have a short summary of all of these and what kind of uh, method you use to optimize and uh, basically run the network effectively. Please, uh, in order to have more details, uh, we are working and uh, working on blogs and other stuff and we will be sharing those details uh, very shortly. So now let's move towards the slides to get more information which will help you in voice over LT optimization. Let's go to the slides. Uh, let's uh, look have uh, let's have a look at the topics that we will discuss for voice over LT optimization. And these topics will give you an idea how you need to optimize uh, voice over LT in a radio network. First one will be the PDCCH capacity and how you how we use semi persistent scheduling to cover that uh, congestion. Number second will be voice over LT coverage. <clears throat> we use different techniques like RLC segmentation and TTI bundling. Then we have the voice over LT capacity that is unacknowledged. We use unacknowledged mode RLC. We have SPS. We have robust error compression. Uh, then we have the voice over LT delay. What kind of delays that we uh, monitor in uh, voice, voice over LT? That is the cost setup delay, RTP delay, handover delay. And then we have uh, the SRVCC, the single radio voice call continuity, and then intra and LT handovers during voice over LT, and how we can control those handovers. So let's move to uh, the next slide. In this slide, uh, we will cover SPS and uh, PDCCH capacity. So in PDCCH has limited capacity in LT to provide grant notification for users scheduled in the downlink. Uh, dynamic scheduler grants uh, user resources based on scheduling mechanism. Whatever mechanism is being used, it can be fair, proportional fair, it can be anyone. And informs uh, via PDCCH for the upcoming downlink data. Voice over LT requires grants on a consistent basis and therefore overloads the PDCCH. SPS uh, semi-persisted scheduling is used to avoid PDCCH congestion. Voice over LT users are scheduled at a fixed time and frequency resource for the initial transmissions and the dynamic scheduler then is for used for retransmissions and for also for cell edge users. <clears throat> The MCS and PRB uh, are also selected per talk spurt rather than the 20 millisecond uh, time period as used in the LT. Uh, as you know, uh, a PDCCH is a scarce resource in LT. One of the significant features of LT when it was launched was its dynamic scheduler and a DL and uplink grants based on the radio link conditions and corresponding MCS. However, the same feature uh, becomes a bottleneck when we deploy voice over LTE uh, as the user has to be scheduled on a permanent basis. This would result in a consistent usage of PDCCH and on top of it uh, QCI1 and QCI2 
for voice over LTE and video are guaranteed by trade services and therefore would get preference over uh, non guaranteed bit rate data traffic so this can result in actually in some cases no throughput for non volty non volty users when the pdch uh, is congested this situation uh, is avoided by using sps and the pdcch message for the grant is sent at the start of the sps session and then at the stop uh, uh, when you have to stop the SPS session. Of course, uh, the gain that we get uh, from the dynamic scheduler is absent in uh, with SPS, but we can have some kind of frequency hopping. Uh, as, as earlier mentioned, uh, MCS and PRB are also used by Talksperts, so that also reduces uh, the uh, PDCCH condition. Uh, now let's move to the next slide. In this slide, uh, we will cover a voice over LTE coverage and how to optimize it. As you all know, cell edge users may suffer from coverage issues and may result in degradation in voice over LTE performance, as with the case of any radio network. In voice over LTE, we use segmentation. Right? Voice over LTE packets are broken down into smaller packets uh, to provide more room for coding bits, a lower MCS, and a better blur. RLC segmentation is activated on per UE basis based on the SINR of the UE. And as uh, just to clarify, RLC segmentation is an uplink technique uh, when your uplink uh, is showing poor performance. Then we can also use uh, TTI bundling. Uh, that is, the same voice packets are transmitted on four consecutive TTIs in the uplink. Uplink in performance is improved via TTI bundling when there is a mismatch between downlink and uplink link budget because of the lower UE power. This is a normal case in radio networks <coughs> where your <coughs> sorry for that where your where your E node B or your BTS has a, a power in range of tens or hundreds of watts, while your UE is in the range of milliwatts. Let's now have a bit of an explanation regarding these uh, features. So uplink link performance is in most cases the limiting performance in radio network. For voice over LT, there's an additional problem that the traffic is symmetric. And therefore, uplink performance is as much as important as the reliability and acceptability of downlink for user experience. RLC segmentation is used to brace, break the voice packets into smaller size in order to add more redundancy and coding bits. This implies the, the use of lower MCS, higher coding rate, and more resilient modulation. However, this would in turn result in higher usage of PDCCH as we are using smaller packets and have more scheduling required and therefore as a system designer we need to find a balance point with capacity and coverage. TTI bundling is used to provide received diversity on the E node B to provide coverage gains. This would also lead to use of more resources and impact capacity in terms of meaningful bits transferred over the year. And of course, as a system designer, again, we need to find a balance point. Let's move on to the next slide. Next, uh, we will discuss uh, voice over LT capacity. Uh, voice over LT capacity can be limited by a number of factors. Uh, first, as we discussed previously, it can be limited by PDCCH. Uh, use of SPS to cater for PDCCH capacity. As a rule of thumb, uh, 200 voice over LT users in every cell with a 500, 5, uh, 5 MHz bandwidth uh, should be a ballpark figure. And, uh, and that's the capacity we should one can have an idea of regarding uh, the capacity I'm mentioning of the cell. Uh, robust header compression uh, is used and it provides compression uh, on the different headers attached to the voice over IP packets. Uh, then we have unacknowledged mode uh, RLC. Uh, because of the unacknowledged mode, we have no retransmissions uh, in the RLC uh, domain. Uh, and this improves uh, your physical downlink shared channel and your physical uplink shared channel capacity. Uh, 
PDCCH, uh, PDSCH, and PUSCH are all the limiting factors for voice virality capacity. Uh, random um, robust header compression is used to compress the headers for the IV packets, and this basically reduces the number of bits to be transferred over the air interface and hence improves air interface capacity. Uh, unacknowledged mode RLC entity can also be applied. Uh, this would remove the retransmissions and hence the number of bits to be transmitted over the in, uh, interface. And please note that uh, the RLC configuration uh, can be done on each bearer basis in LTE. Uh, so we can basically optimize uh, this part as well. Let's move to the next slide. Let's discuss uh, different type of delays uh, that are important in voice over LT. Uh, first, we have the call setup delay. Uh, there are a number of conditions involved in call setup delay. There can be precondition, there can be early media, and then there are a host of uh, network issues. Since we are doing a short video, uh, I'm just mentioning the issues here. But uh, in our training, uh, uh, training program, we can go this uh, into a lot more detail. Then we have the high handover delay. Uh, handover delay will be uh, dominated by the data forwarding X2 interface feature. And then we have the handover trigger and execution parameters. And all of those will be important in providing uh, the required amount of voice over LT delay. Uh, the precondition in call setup uh, needs around 600 milliseconds additional, and the early media needs around additional 700 milliseconds. Precondition. Uh, is uh, the feature in which uh, during the SIP negotiation before we have received uh, the SIP status okay uh, the resources can be reserved and in the early media uh, it is basically a feature where we before uh, the SIP negotiation has completed we can uh, provide any kind of announcements so these are the two features uh, which may cause some kind of uh, delay in the call setup uh, apart from these, there are a number of network issues, but we can discuss them in a longer network, uh, longer training session. Uh, let's move to the next slide. Let's discuss uh, SRVCC, single radio voice call continuity and handover for voice over LTE. So as in any uh, radio network, uh, mobility optimization is an integral part. But for voice over LTE, uh, optimization of handover parameters basically focuses on early trigger and avoiding large interruptions and packet loss. So in order to improve our experience of a voice call. It should be mentioned that intra-frequency handovers, which are based on event A3, are uh, not um, they're not optimizable in, in terms of the QCI. So what uh, it means is that the normal uh, mobility parameters such as hysteresis, offsets and thresholds will be used for a voice over LT as well. And as a system designer or the system optimizer, we will have to find the balance point where we can optimize our normal data traffic and we can also optimize voice over LT performance for that event A3. Uh, handovers based on A1, A2, A5, B1, B2 uh, events uh, have their separate hysteresis, separate thresholds, and separate offsets uh, based on QCI. So you can have a different hysteresis and offset and threshold for QCI1, and you can have a different hysteresis, offset, and uh, parameters for QCI8 or 9. So as a system designer, you can use this QCI based uh, parameters to optimize voice over LT in a different way and your normal data traffic in a different way. So there will be stringent hysteresis requirements for QCI 1 and QCI 2. So ensure that there is no packet loss, there is no delay and there is no jitter for your voice over LTE. Then we have uh, an interesting uh, like uh, as you know that SRVCC is your single radio voice call continuity uh, feature. Uh, so what happens in SRVCC is that uh, usually for uh, mixed networks where you have LTE, 4G um, and 3G and 2G, the focus is on LTE. We want the mobile to camp on LTE. So the threshold for LT in cell reselection is very low, usually NEG 122, NEG 124. So what happens is the threshold for SRVCC is a bit stricter. So it will be around NEG 116 or NEG 115 when the mobile 
tries to hand over from voice over LT to a legacy network to maintain the call quality. So we have an ASRVCC where SRVCC is attempted during the SIP alerting phase. And then we have the BSRVCC where the uh, SRVCC is attempted before the alerting phase. And we have different parameters for that. In addition to this, uh, the performance of handover can be optimized using your radio link failure timers, uh, that is N310, N311, T310. And we should be uh, cognizant of the fact that if we use these parameters to avoid uh, losses packed on the OSS, this will result in poor uh, more user perception of the call because your calls will not, your links will not fail uh, until your, uh, your, because of your very relaxed uh, parameters and that would cause a lot of uh, bad perception in the voice part. So we need to optimize these, uh, these timers uh, carefully uh, whenever a voice over LT has been deployed in your network. Thank you so much for watching the video. And I hope it will help you in voice over LT optimization. And if you need further information, training, consulting, and also want to see our blog, you can visit winnings.com.au. You can should join our LinkedIn pages, our Facebook pages, 